Hey everyone, Andrew Logan here. Great to be live with you on Facebook and we're in the Way Out community. And I am here as always when I'm live on the Facebook in the Way Out community. I'm here with an amazing guest, Chloe Myers. Thanks for being on with me. My pleasure. Nice to be here. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. Now I have, I, I really want to share Chloe's story with you because it's, it's so, so cool. But I just want to give a little bit of background on what an amazing person she is. So we met about three years ago. I think Chloe and I met virtually. We haven't actually met face to face yet. Um, the power of the internet and the power of online business. But uh, we met just through my book and, and Chloe joined our coaching course. And just you talk about, you know, breath of fresh air and you talk about people who are just so positive, so energetic. They always show up with a smile. And Chloe was just, it was just absolutely amazing to have her in our group because she was always so supportive. She was always so positive and she had a great team of people around her. Your vibe attracts your tribe. And I think of that, especially with people like Chloe, because she was also surrounded by very happy, energetic, positive people. And it was great working with a lot of your team as well for the, for the while there, Chloe. So I've asked Chloe to come on today because like all of us, you know, life, we go through waves and there's times where it just feels like you're going with the flow and at times it, it feels where you are pushing upstream, you know, pushing a broken down car up the hill and the second you turn away, it rolls back down and you feel like you're starting again. And Chloe and I were just connecting, we were chatting the other day and we were talking about how she'd had a massive breakthrough after 18 months of just a bit of frustration and some of those wall kicking moments and a little mindset shift that allowed everything to just clicking place and all of a sudden the 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 flow the tide turned and she's been on fire since she's been in absolute momentum so chloe that's what i want to talk about with you today it's really cool i want to share your story and i want to share this great breakthrough that you've had so setting up i just want to talk about probably go back to you know some of those tougher times some of those frustrating times and the biggest thing i know about you is that you your determination like you will not quit so just talking about some of those days where you weren't in flow, it wasn't working. How did you stay determined? How did you stay focused? How did you keep away those voices that say, you know what, just just give up and go back to work and, and live an ordinary life, all those sorts of things? Thanks, Andrew. So lovely of you to say all those nice things as well. Thank you. Um, I mean, I've been in my business for eight years. Um, I think what's really key is is to be completely committed and married to your business. I think there's a lot of shiny objects out there and people are like magpies and they're like, oh, is that better or is that better? I'm wholly committed to, to my company and to the products that I work with. Um, and I've always been told to treat this business like a marriage, not a one night stand. So, you know, when you're in marriage, your marriage is not perfect the whole time. It You have ups and downs, you have real highs, you have lows and you, but you have to work at it. You can't just walk away. So um, I've always treated my business like a marriage. I'm wholly committed to it. Um, but also I think when you have seen success and you've seen the compound effect as well that we can have in affiliate marketing or network marketing, it's very, very powerful. You just need a few really good people to get into action. And I've always learned that the crumbs make the cake. And then, you know, you build the cake out of the crumbs, but you need a couple of really good wedges in your cake. And um, that's that's been great because I, I do have some great partners that I work with who inspire me every day and I think that's a key if you're starting out in this industry is to go and find someone to work with go and find some people to work with because they help hold you accountable and you have to show up for them as much as yourself I think if I was doing this on my own it would be a lot a lot tougher um but I think the key to never giving up for me is just having that strong why that 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 compass that keeps me straight the whole time and I never really knew why I came into this business. It was weird. It, it took me a couple of years. It took me two years to come into the industry. Um, I used the products for two and a half years before I said yes to the actual business component. So I presumed everyone would take that long to say yes to me if I asked them to have a look at our business. But um, so I never really understood my why. And then someone was saying to me that it was the very first thing you saw for yourself. And when I thought about that as the stay at home mom who was very stuck, couldn't go back to work. My my job was 50 hours a week in the office, had two young children under four. I thought, oh, that's it. If I don't do this, then what? If I haven't got this, what am I going to do? I, the, the modern day work 
situation doesn't work for me and, and my husband who works long long hours in the city so I was like well this is it then I've got to make this work so I think that's why I've never quit. I've never seen an opportunity as good as what we have in in our industry, especially as a mum, to be able to work with full autonomy, flexibility, um, the ability to build it on your own terms, with your personality, with, with positive people around you, with people like yourself who just give and give and give, staying close to the fire around people that inspire you and can teach you what to do. I think I think that's the absolute key to building that rock solid belief, but having a why that just no matter what negativity you come up against or frustrations, you're not going to quit because it's so much bigger than that. Mm, I love it. There's, I mean, so much, so much gold in there. And you talk about, you know, the people that you're best serving, the people that you're best set up to serve is exactly who you are. I think people can get a little bit overwhelmed in this world of social media branding and, and having to find all your niche and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, well, who were you on those moments when you were having those wall kicking days and those those days where you just were frustrated and then you found a solution to problems you were having in your life? That is the person that you can empathize with. That's the person that you can really connect with. And that's the person that keeps you grounded. As you said, I, I want to talk about the marriage analogy because I, I absolutely love it. And I think it's really important when, you know, we talk about, Talk about, you know, like some of the things that often one of the big challenges people have in business really and in life is they can get a little bit addicted to the drama, you know, some of those those flashing lights and shiny drama things and whether it's the, the latest reality TV show or just creating drama in their own life. And we always in our team, we talked about it like a drama hook, like a little fishing hook and it just kind of pulls your focus away from, from where you're looking and you know, you talk about people when they join a company and it's like a new relationship and everything is exciting and everything's fun. Uh, but then the strength of a long-term relationship is falling in love with the fundamentals. And I mean, it's a Tuesday evening here. We've got biology homework happening in one room. We've got maths homework happening in another room. And, you know, it's not, it's not like a super exciting date night or anything for us, but it's the fundamentals of a happy you know, happy family that gets to be together. And as you say, we we just need to find that and fall in love with those fundamentals and find the team, the community and the company and the products where we can do that. Because if we're always looking for that drama, it is just going to be a fish hook in the, the cheek that's constantly pulling us in different directions and constantly taking us away from the focus where we need to look forward. Mm. Yeah, totally agree. And it's exhausting as well when you're constantly on the search for drama, like... A lot of us just want a peaceful life. <laughs> Stability. Yeah, I, yeah. Angie and I, yeah, we're, we're quite boring. We live up in this little bubble up in a little mountain town away, in our own little bubble away from anything. But so let's let's talk about, you know, so so over your eight years, you've you've had that focus. You you are a unicorn because of that. And that's why you know, I absolutely loved our time working together because you didn't have any of those wavering challenges. It was always just... I'm, I'm going to make this work. I, like, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Let's make this thing work. So, but then we hit a point where it's it's not happening. And as I say, you know, you can feel like you're treading water. You can feel like you're just sort of pushing the thing, but is it actually moving? What was it that helped you have that little, that mindset? I shouldn't say little mindset shift, but often it is the smallest things, that the smallest hinge that swings the biggest door. What was it that helped you have that mindset shift that all of a sudden you've just had a rock star month? And actually, Chloe was just telling me, she won't say this, but she was just telling me before we hit that go live button, she's just been recognized by her company as one of the single top most amazing women in the whole country. Um, just what yesterday, wasn't it? Just the, just the other day. So uh, no, yeah, you are yeah, International Women's Day, yeah. Yeah, well, there you go, International Women's Day, and you're one of the absolute top, absolute best. So you're absolutely flying at the moment. So I'd love to talk about that mindset shift that happened. So it's two things. So you talked about drama, and I, I jotted down reality and stories because it's very our brain loves negativity. It's attracted to it. It's why, you know, I don't watch the news and things like that because we get pulled into that drama, into that negative way. And you can hear somebody could pay you so many lovely compliments and one person can say something negative about you, which person do you think you're going to hear? 
you're going to hear that thing that you weren't good enough or you didn't look nice in that outfit or something instead of the 10 people that said you looked amazing your brain has a very clever way of hooking into that negativity and we need to be very very careful about what we tell ourselves and i found myself as a as a leader in the business with this certain uh loop or like way of being which was i never wanted to be a leader I'm a reluctant leader, you know, like who el- whoever wants to put themselves out front, like very few people, like maybe prime ministers and things like that. But I like being in a pack, you know, it's very comfortable. So I, I had this story that I wasn't a natural leader. I was never meant to be there. But find me a leader that ever intended to become a leader. You just kind of keep pushing the comfort zone. And before you know it, you're like, I'm a leader of all these people behind me. So I had this yeah. sort of negativity it's- around it. Um, Sorry, I just I just jump in there. It is. I mean, you talk about politicians. I think um, there's a like I, we talk about supply chain issues in the world. I think probably the biggest supply chain issue we have is like honest, integrity driven uh-huh. politicians. Right? It's the it's the people who actually like fall into leadership, but they do it out of authenticity and they do it out of serving others. And but you do have to have that that ch- that chat with yourself because. I know a, a good mentor of mine has the quote, you can't you can't lead the cavalry if you think you look stupid on a horse. You know, we have to sit there and make sure, okay, well, I'm willing to go out there and I'm willing to get out in front of people and, and take on this leadership role. So, yeah, it's it can be a challenge for people, but it's also a great part of growth because so many people are inspired by your story so, so far. You just need to take that plunge. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, this whole industry, you just learn every day, right? It's always, a, that's we always said it's a personal development journey disguised as a business because, you you know, in order to, to be successful, you have to constantly adapt. And I was listening to this amazing coach talking about, she delivered a talk for us at a leadership event and she was saying, you know, are you a fox? Because foxes, especially in the UK, are very adaptable. She said, are you a fox or a panda? You know, pandas are nearly wiped out. They sit there, they reach for their food. You know, they're not very good at procreating, <laughs> Whereas foxes are just completely agile, adapt all the time to their environment. They've learned to adapt. And I was sitting there and it was like little light bulbs. I was like, actually, I'm very foxy. I, I have, I've adapted over eight years. You know, we've been through so many changes in our industry with social media. You have to adapt. With lockdown and COVID and things, you have to adapt. You always have to adapt. If you stay put doing the same thing over and over, probably not going to work very well. So it was certain little things like that in terms of leadership that I was like, actually, like starting to recognize the good the great things that you do Um, and my reality was not how other people see me and so there was a certain mindset shift there especially around bringing people into into the business and thinking oh I had blocks around that of like you know I've done this I'm not getting the results there it was real sort of stinking thinking whereas if you if you can adapt and change the story you tell yourself and the reality that is have a whole different way of being and what I was being was very much in a victim mindset, like, oh, it's not my fault, it's this, and oh, da-da. Whereas actually, if you stand as a as a giant, people will follow. So there was a big shift in that. But the main thing really was standing for community because I've always had a vision bigger than myself. You know, I want my team to win. With what we do, we work with in the health industry, nutrition industry, you know, we literally can change lives, you know, and I have an impact every day. I get messages every day of how people are being helped and supported. And it started with my journey, my parents, my family. And so I've always known that, but I did a, I did a a three day course and they were talking about community and group. And that was the shift for me. I just thought, my gosh, you know, I've created this phenomenal community, this amazing group based on wanting to change lives and help other people. The more people we help, the more we get paid. It's a beautiful way to get paid in business, you know, based on the amount of impact you're having in the world. Um, And I shied away from sort of talking about community and standing for others, because actually in this day and age, all we want is to feel belonging. That's what that's what us humans want. You know, no man is an island. And and we 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 developed as a human race based on community, based on small villages or you know, communities where everyone works together and pulls each other up and pulls each other through hardship. And that's what's so amazing about our industry. Um, and even like people outside of your company will, like you and I, you know, you've always supported me and we're in both in the health industry, but in different companies and stuff. But I think that's what's really magical. And the moment I started 
enrolling people by talking about my vision for community, belonging, standing for a purpose bigger than ourselves, standing for a mission. And if we all link arms together, the impact that we can have, that's where things changed because we live very much for me and I. What's in it for me? What am I going to get from this? Or why should I help you? That's not that's my time that I've got to give. It's this me, I thing. But if we can stand for, well, if I help Andrew and support Andrew, then that helps me do this and it, it grows me as this person. I might impact that person over there. As soon as you stand for someone else or stand for a bigger mission and impact, that's where things are going to change. And we have to change that mentality of I and me. And that, I think, is one of the biggest things that you get from network marketing is is that that true sense of group um because you can't you can't succeed in our industry if you're not helping pull others up um and once i once that completely cemented in me i could see what we were doing and as soon as i started switching that with my team they started going out there and sharing that message and i think that's all people want now is connection we're so disjointed and cut off and people just rely on their phones to communicate. I've always been a pick up the phone and call somebody, uh, speak to my clients before they order with me. And that's unheard of, I think, a lot of the time. People are like, do you want to order? Yes, I do. How much do you want? Da -da -da. I'm like, can we get on a call? Let's talk. Because it's interaction, it's community, it's conversation. Um, and I've just, I've 10x that basically and, and the results have been amazing, you know. I love it. And again, there's just so much, so much gold nuggets in there that we could, you know, we dig through. And again, if you're watching on the live stream, let me know if you're getting some of these aha moments, if you're having these light bulb moments from what Chloe's talking about, about taking that leap and just saying, you know what, I do need to stand up, but not just standing up, I need to stand up for a bigger cause. And I'm pretty sure it's Henry David Thoreau who says that the majority of men lead lives of quiet desperation. Um, and you know, we look around at people who are hurting in so many ways, but you know, in society, you've got to be quite stoic about it. Certainly in Australia, you know, the kind of Australian culture is not to whinge and just accept it and you know, just be a, an Aussie battler and all that kind of stuff. But people are just living these lives of quiet desperation and looking for community, looking for support. And then you're having this ability to enroll people into a bigger vision and actually take them, okay, we've got our life, we've got our work, we've got our family, and there's another place here. I'll pop Chloe's uh, little website actually up on the the board, uh, on the thing so you can see it there, the bplan.info, or, or if you want to check Chloe out on her social media and follow her because you're always having parties. <laughs> that's, that's the one thing I notice about you is you're always like posting, you, you're getting dressed up and you're at retreats and you're at events and you're just, you're having fun. And as you say, but you're, you're enrolling people into a bigger vision about community. And if if there was one question that I got a, get asked more than anything else, people are always saying, you know, how do you find business builders? And my answer is always find people who care about other people and teach them how to make, build a business in this incredibly simple, duplicatable, systemized business model, rather than just find people who want money and teach them how to care about people. Because as you said, you can't get far in this business if you don't give a crap about other people. Why not find people who care about other people and then just teach them this very simple business model? I don't know how to get people to teach. To, I don't know how to teach people how to care about other people. I haven't figured that out yet. But I do know how to show them a simple business model that can really help. So I think for you, and, and it's so awesome to watch and so awesome to see, and it's, and it's great that, you know, as you said, you've had this huge shift of just the amazing community that you offer and how much people are ever since COVID with social media. We're so connected but also so disconnected and people are crying out for community. They're crying out to be in a space where they feel seen and supported and belong to something bigger than themselves. It's so awesome. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And and doing, you know, it's all about giving back and positivity. And I think when you can grasp in this industry that you alone can't can't do much, you know, you're never gonna get paid being a being a sort of solo person out there. But I always say like if, if you can impact ten people, ten people can impact a hundred. And if a hundred can impact a thousand, and that's how it goes, it's the ripple effect. And I also think that 
I've I've become quite sort of open and honest about the system being broken. And I do feel that like the, the model of traditional business of working nine to five till you're 60 something and retiring and being able to travel and, you know, afford your lovely lifestyle that you've worked 40 years for. It doesn't work anymore. I don't know any sort of most of my my mum friends are having to work full time along with their husbands. So you've now got two income earners in the house. You're both working 40 hour weeks, if not more to now they're pushing the retirement age over here to 69 or 70. And then you you and then the elderly can't afford to heat their homes because they've got no money. So I'm like, it doesn't work. So I'm mm. very open about you need to have multiple income streams. You need to have flexible ways of working have your full-time job but be savvy like go out and find other little i call them like safety nets and I, i've called it a safety net ever since we went into into lockdown because my husband's in the film industry does special effects for big film and they couldn't make films for ages you know thousand people on set that's not going to happen so he he was furloughed and as a stay-at-home mom i was paying the mortgage i was paying bills like that is a, a true freedom when we talk about freedom like for me Freedom is being able to take 17 days off over Easter, like I've just done, 17 days with my children full time, taking them away to, on holiday to France and things like that, and being fully present. That for me is freedom. And also having savings account and money invested. I know you, you, you that's a huge thing of what you do, Andrew, is teaching people how to create passive income and reinvest. And for us, having those safety nets through this business is is such a gift like it certainly takes the pressure off at night when you go to bed, you know, worrying about how you're going to make ends meet and stuff. So that's something that I'm I'm also sort of standing in when I talk to people is recognising that if not this, then what? Because I do think we have to have a what. We have to do something in order to have what we work so hard for. You know, life is, is for living. It's not just for working yourself to the bone, you know, in the daily grind. Um, yeah. Yeah. So good. Let's well just as, as I think as we finish up, it's great to talk about that safety net because I think sometimes people can look at the word freedom and obviously it's it's an incredibly subjective, a very visceral word. There's a, a huge vision with the word freedom, but it's also an overwhelming word for people. And it can also, I guess, take people out of the game before they even they even get started. Because if you are struggling and in, and if you are really in a position where you are just trying to keep your head above water the concept of going from that to financially free can seem like a bridge too far. It can, it can be almost unbelievable. And just the energy shift in what if we could just take you to a point where your head is above water and your energy shift then when you are not thrashing around kicking water all day, every day, you've got your head above water where there is just that safety net in place where you're not having to worry about your heating bill or, you know, the, as you were saying before, the, the gas bill and, and just those things that just eat away at us day to day in, in the costs of being alive. And I think it's so important that you say that because, you know, we, we love to obviously sell the huge vision in this industry, but I think we also scare a lot of great people away because it's kind of, it's, it's all or nothing. And if I'm not financially free, then I'm a failure. So what if we did just talk a lot more about that? Let me build, let me help you build a safety net. Let me help you get into a position where you have a backup plan in place, a B plan, as you say. So have you found for you that's that's been like a really great part of it when you when you get in and you dig into the system is broken, it's a great conversation for you to be having with people about that. Let me help you get your head above water and then our energy is going to shift and people are going to see that change in energy and they're going to want to know what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, I think when you speak to, I came into this business for 200 pounds. What's that about $300 or something because stay at home. Mom. Thousand Australian dollars. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but yeah, in fact, like 200 pounds at the time that got us because they always say, you know, there's too much month at the end of the money. We'd get to the end of the money on the 25th. And then for five, six days, we'd be scrabbling around, moving money from account to account to account. I remember saying to my upline, I just said, I just want 200 quid because it means that it gets us through the month and I might be able to buy my husband a Christmas present this year. That's all most people come in for. They just want that little extra so that if the clutch goes on the car or you get that random bill come in, you're like, oh, my God, 
you know, that makes a big difference. I don't think anybody really truly believes when they come into this industry that they could go out there and create true financial freedom because as you say that vision is so big it's so overwhelming you you've never done anything like this before so i always talk about look you're working full time like what do you want and they're like well if i could just work four days a week and have one day with my children okay well how much do you get paid a day like how much do you need to be making a month like just make it really small you know i've got somebody that's paying off a hundred pounds a month on a debt they've got a credit card bill she said, but most of that is the interest. I said, wow, so if we paid off 200, that's really chipping away. I said, so you just got to make 100 pounds a month. She's like, yeah, that's all she wants. But of course, when you start making that, your vision becomes that little bit bigger. You start stepping into reality of what could be. And that's what happened to me. I made my 200 pounds, so I wanted 500. Then when I made 500, I was like, wow, this is fun. I'm learning so much, this is great. What if I made 1,000? Oh my gosh. So it just started like that, but I certainly didn't come in for the business that I have now. Because yeah. I wasn't that person that I am now. I was much smaller. I thought very small. I didn't have that growth yet. I hadn't met you, I hadn't done the trainings, I hadn't listened to Eric Warren, I hadn't done Jim Rohn, I hadn't done any of that stuff. But as you grow, your vision grows. Um, yeah. I like to I like to talk about it like if you've if you've never traveled and all you know is your immediate geography your immediate surroundings it's hard to believe that there's like a country called australia where we have things like platypuses and, and kangaroos and you know some of the the crazy wildlife that we have in this world because it just you know if you've never looked out seen anything past what's outside your window it's really hard to believe that all the other worlds that are out there and so that's our goal as you say our goal is okay well What's your current horizon? Like, what what can you see yourself making? What can you believe yourself making? And for Angie and I, it was exactly the same. It was three to five hundred dollars, which is you know smack on two hundred pounds, kind of stuff. And that was just that was enough to allow Angie to stay at home when when Jack was born. And we even that was like imagine if imagine if we could make three to five hundred dollars a week. It was never meant to be anything more than that. And still to this day for you know, for all the the amazing, you know, checks and the bonuses and all that kind of stuff and what we've done, nothing has ever been more powerful for us than that $300 story and just showing people this is exactly how we got to $300 a week because 99% of people out there with their, in their current predicament and their current financial mindset when they haven't done the gym rounds or anything like that just yet, that's their horizon. And if we can get them there, we can start to tell a different story. We can We can get them to believe more. But we still, that, that's that's the biggest, most impactful thing on our life because that's when we could actually see change in our life that, you know what, actually Angie could stay at home with the kids. And then, as you say, well, what if I could then drop a day? What if I could go to four days? What if I could go to three days? What if I could go to two days? What if I could go to zero days? But it was just chipping away each day as we built our own financial education and helping other people find their safety net. So. I, I love how you I love how you explain that. And as I said, I love how you're standing so strongly in that posture now and standing so strongly with that story. So as we finish up, Chloe, I as I said, I, I want to really thank you for your time. I want to pop your little I want to pop your website. Here it is. I want to pop your website back up again so people can check you out and follow Chloe if you want to have fun, if you want to laugh, if you want to see her. And sometimes, you know, rock up to a fancy dress party is the only person in fancy dress and, and all those sorts of things that um, that she has been known to do. Uh, you can laugh, laugh along with her, not at her, of course, but you can laugh along with her. But just finishing up, I, as I said, we're sort of circling back to what we we're talking about at the start. So if someone's watching this live or they're watching it on YouTube, they're listening to the replay on the podcast, and they are stuck and they are one no away from quitting. They are one conversation away from saying, you know what, actually, I don't think this is for me or I don't think I'm for this. Uh, what would you just say as someone who has ridden a lot of waves, who's been through a lot of cycles over the last eight plus years? Stop making it about you. It's not about you. Um, you're actually really not that important in all of it. It's standing for other people. If my upline, who's my... Um, health practitioner, if he hadn't have stood for me 11 years ago, I wouldn't have had the results on the health products. And I probably wouldn't have my baby and I might not have my mum. Like he stood for me and I'm forever grateful for that. And then for two and a half years, he stood for me for the business. And because of him, I have everything I have. 
So it was never about him. It was about how he could help me and impact my life. And so I see it. I see this industry as a gift to pay forward. So it's not about us, and we have to we have to get over ourselves, and uh, get over our blocks and our our insecurities and things like that. Because you know it's all about the impact we can make. And if you are bold enough to step forward and stand for somebody else and tell them how you could help them and what's in it for them, and the vision that it could do for them and their families and the people they care about, that's where you'll get over your block because it's it. It's no longer small-minded thinking. It's big thinking, um, and it, it's impactful. And people will see that as well. That you will, it, they'll have a lot of integrity and authenticity about you as well. Mm. Awesome. You've been so. Oh, I've just lost you. I've, yeah. I've just gone. Well, that that is perfect timing. I hope you can still hear me. <laughs> but I think that is perfect timing. It looks like the camera has just died on me. But I want to thank you, Chloe, for being on, and I thank everyone for listening in, watching live. Uh, and as I said, guys, check out Chloe, check out her, you know, just her beautiful vision and the energy and everything that she brings to her life and brings to social media. Thank you for being on Chloe. And I will chat to you soon. See you, everyone. Right. Thanks. Thank you.